Welcome to another Overland Workshop. In this series, I'm talking about the game changers. Those things that we have seen in the world of overlanding and remote travel that have changed our lives. And again, I'm afraid I'm, I'm showing my age with this one again. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. Blessing and the blessing. I was going to say a blessing and a curse, but it's not a curse. There's no, there's no ways. But let's put it this way: the way I feel about it is, if they are mis, if the sat nav is misused, then it can cause all kinds of problems and have caused problems for people traveling that rely on them too much. Now, in wilderness areas, and this is my take on it. In wilderness areas, you cannot rely on the turn-by-turn -turn route guidance on a GPS because often a GPS cannot tell the difference between a gravel road or gravel track where you can average 80 kilometers, 70 kilometers, 60 kilometers an hour comfortably to a track that you can barely do 10. This is, I've seen this quite often, and I've seen situations where, and heard of situations where overland travelers have become disorientated because of it, and you are relying on a, on a, a synthetic intelligence to route you the best route. How does it know the best route? Even my iPhone and its uh, and Apple Maps will sometimes take me on the most bizarre route to a destination in town. How is a, a GPS going to know best, the best route in a remote area where the roads are less researched? So w the way I use a GPS in town is, yes, I do rely on this artificial intelligence because they... Yeah, they'll, they'll know more than me about how to get to an address around town. And every now and again, they mess up, and we all know it. They mess up terribly by sending us a strange and long route. But mostly, it's amazing that we can do that. But in the remote areas, I mean, for example, here, we are, this is our primary uh, 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 navigation tool are paper maps and then I have a GPS that I am now testing and trying and I will be doing a review called the Garmin Overlander I am very impressed with it not only am I impressed with its intuitive way that I can operate it and, uh, and manipulate it and adapt it to my own use I'm impressed with the maps no they are not as good as the HEMA Australia maps because I have the HEMA Australia maps also on my iPad. So I have HEMA maps, Garmin maps, paper maps, but these are my primary tool, not the GPS's. The GPS I use for, for position, location, confirmation only. Because then it's my, it's my brain. And I am the one who's going to question a decision. You see, if you blindly go by the GPS and the GPS turn makes a left here, you just go left. Well, maybe, just maybe, it's wrong and it'll take you on a track that suddenly now you've calculated how much fuel you're going to use. And now you find, oops, uh, it, it, because of the nature of the track, I'm using twice the fuel that I had and now am lost and now I don't know where I am because I haven't constantly had a base reference, a constant base reference. Today's exploration coming to a close. We found on the route a place called Senyati Lodge and Campsite. Uh, it's, we're using tracks for Africa and we've already made the mistake of using auto routing which is a bit dicey with this kind of travel because the GPS can't really tell the difference between a rocky track that you can do three kilometers an hour and one that you can do 70. 
and this is exactly what's happening now it's taking us on this very very narrow track to this lodge where we're going to find a campsite what we will find there who knows I do know is that the track we're driving on is not has not been used by vehicles much there were no signposts so it is definitely not a traditional in lodge in the lodge sense but my guess is somebody's who submitted information to Tracks for Africa has playfully called it a lodge when all it actually is is a nice area for wild camping and if that's the case that's okay Glenn will pay for you Glenn or proud we like the fight Okay. The fact that GPS's can do that, can say at any time, as long as it's moving in a direction, the curse on the GPS will tell you where you are and where you are going, in what direction you are traveling. The moment the vehicle stops, the GPS does not know anymore which way it is pointing. It has to actually move to be able to say, ah, you're traveling two five zero degrees or whatever most of them don't even say that most of them will just say instead of saying two five zero degrees they'll say west which is two seven zero degrees <clears throat> so that must be your basis for navigation and at any time you can pick this up and I do it all the time we'll be driving along there'll be an intersection I'm looking on the GPS and say, yeah, that's the one. The GPS is just telling me where I am and told me that I have reached that, that turn off. I'll pull the car over and double check and say, yes, it's correct. Or hang on a minute. At least then when I make the turn and I go, in my, men, in my mind, I know. I'm not relying on somebody else or something else. I know where I am. And I also have a reference point. Because at any time further on, where one, maybe you get lost or confused, you can say, at one o'clock we were there. We've been doing 25 kilometers per hour. It's two hours later. Therefore, we are in, within 50 kilometers of there. Which road have we taken? Have we been traveling west, northwest, north, whatever? and at least get a reference. Now that come, also comes from flying, the practice of flying. You can use GPS's and all these different flying aids for navigation, but it is law that you carry a map. And pilots use maps, still to this day, even though they've got all of that incredible equipment. They use maps. They use maps as backups, not necessarily primary. We on the ground must use maps as our primary. But the fact that at any time we can tell where we are and where we're pointing is, is marvelous. But it wasn't always that way. This clip that I've dug up was filmed in 1993. The Land Rover 110 is mine, the Range Rover a friend of mine. We are driving the salt flats of the Makarikadi in central Botswana. It's an incredibly remote area with few roads. Navigation was by dead reckoning. Our nav tools consisted of a protractor and a prismatic compass. Navigation was done in the traditional way, dead reckoning with the aid of a compass. 347. So we don't want to go to west. Do you west? We don't want to go to west. Where's Kukanya Island? Just, you just, see that there? You see that there? Yeah. That is, I bet you that is that, and we are here. Just yeah. say again, you bet what? No, 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 it's good. Do you know, do you know, do you know, I think you're fine. There's cars killing lives. Yeah, I know, just put it on the ground there, because you're going to get... Yeah. Yeah. You're on somewhere on that line, hold that. Because this makes, this makes yeah, such a lot of sense, John. Yeah. The two spits, that spit. Yeah. That's what we should do. Drive along the edge of the pan. Okay. So all the way along there. Down to there. That's what I say. We're there. We think. We're there. We're there. And we're going to head straight across there. Yeah. We're going to end up at that spit there. Mm. Now that spit, we will then decide which course to take. But then probably we will follow. Yeah. The edge of the pan.
Okay, it's Monday morning. We're packing up to leave. Uh, last night we had a very, very calm night. Wonderful, wonderful sunset. And uh, we didn't actually camp at the first set of baobab trees that we came to because on the floor there seems to be a symbiotic relationship between a particular type of grass and the baobab trees. It's kind of devil form and it's terrible stuff. So we've actually moved into an open area. Um, we didn't make it to Kokonya Island. The time got a bit late, so we're off um, in that direction. And we will this time keep to the edge of the pan, owing to the very hazardous conditions we encountered yesterday. And uh, we don't want to try our luck again. I think you're all talking. It's absolutely brilliant. We do rely on them, and I think perhaps we rely on them a little bit too much. We trust them, I should say, a little bit too much. Thank you for everybody watching. Uh, I know most of you have subscribed. There are a lot more in this series to come. See you next week.